Welcome everybody to Sprint Talk. Again, this is the Twitter space because there's too many distance podcasts and not enough Sprint. And uh, you know, Sprinters need love too. And I am very excited about this one. This has been the first one that I've done since after World Championships. There's been a huge pause since the last one I've done. I think the last one I did was before Prefontaine. And you know, I just didn't have time. Serious season, got some PRs, great things happen. But you know, we got a little bit of time and I got some great runners here. Some also some great 200 meter runners here. I got Dream out here, the Dream. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and uh, do it on yours. Yo, what's up? Yo, what's up? Yo, what's up? from Trinidad Tobago. Yeah, 200, 400 meter runner. So, you know, just good to be here, good to talk, and hoping to have a very in interesting conversation here with you. All. So, hope you all enjoy. Come on, man, you gotta, you gotta give us a little bit of a little bit of a resume. Um. I am um, world indoor champion this year in the 400 meters. Um, I'm saying world champ. World champ in the 400. In the 400. Off of Secondary event. Yeah. Secondary event okay. indoors. That's crazy. Don't do hype up too much. Don't hype up. Okay. Too much. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, double Commonwealth um, champion in the 400, in the 4 by 4 relay, and the 200 meters. Mm. And I'm a, I think I'm the third person to defend the title. So I won 2018 and was able to win. Um, 2022. Um, That's crazy. Also, a world That's champion crazy. medalist in 2017 in the 200 meters and world champion in the 4x4 relay in 2017. Also, um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about me. Some of the medals that I've won. Um, outside of that, national record holder, um, indoor 200, indoor 400, and um, outdoor 4x4. So, yeah. Dang man, that's an impressive that's resume. What I'm saying. I got nothing. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm very glad I got you to actually talk about it because you know you was really about to just slide on by without saying any of that. What? <laughs> All right, so going to our first Joe name in here, we got Joseph Fambule. Uh, Joseph, you just signed with Asics. Uh, why don't you uh, go ahead and tell us about that? <laughs> yeah, so. When I was at regionals, there was talk about, you know, with me and Coach Howell about, oh, do you want to go pro, you know, and we were trying to figure out which agent that I was going with, and I went with Newton Agencies, and then since then, he was he has been shopping me around with, um, you know, Adidas and Puma and whatnot, and the best choice was Asics, and I'm glad that I'm with them because they don't really have anybody in the sprints, so I'm really holding it down. So they show me love, you know, at Worlds, they brought me over to their uh, Aspects Hospitality place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and that was cool, you know. Um, our slides, these slides right here. <laughs> Rocking. Fire. Rockin'. I'm saying. I think your slides uh, got holes in them. They're 3D printed. Oh. You know I'm saying. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, um, I, I, I like them though. You know, um, trying to bring a A6 back on the map. With uh, sprinting, no pressure, yeah. no pressure. Well, yeah. So, so would you say that um, you you we gonna see it in some A six commercials and stuff soon? Maybe. Sure. Yeah. Of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Poster yeah. boy. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be. Trying to be. Trying to. Yeah, be. Let them know. Let them know. Nah, speak nah, it into nah, existence. Yeah. I can't speak on anything now because I just signed a little um, social media thing where you can't speak on anything you don't really know. Yeah. You know. So, for the sake of. Fair enough. Putting it out there, I, there's something in the works. Okay, that's good. I love to hear it. I love to hear it. All right, and now we're going to our second Joe, Joe Brown. Now, Joe, you, you know, me and you only met each other probably about a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And um, a, a strong connection definitely was formed. This is a, a, a great, what would you consider a physical therapist? I know you're a doctor. <laughs> um, I call myself a performance physio or ther physical therapist and coach, so I work with mind and body, really the whole person, to be there for them for their best performance. Your goals and my goals, how I roll. Yeah, wherever the person needs at the moment. <laughs> exactly, like sometimes it's a conversation, sometimes it's body work, sometimes it's an activation, sometimes it's a reset, sometimes it's talking to the coach or the athlete, so yeah. just whatever they need on there. Yeah, now I am going to have to force you to brag about yourself a little bit. Could, could you just go a, a, a little bit of <laughs> sports 
a few of the athletes if okay. you feel comfortable mentioning them, just so people get an idea of what level you're working at. Okay, so I've worked with 17 different sports at international level. 17? 17 oh, different wow. sports over 20 something years. Let's not be too, <laughs> say too much about my age. Uh, five <laughs> different countries. I've been to three Olympics, okay. three Com Games. Um, lots of world championships with different sports. So each sport I work with teaches me something new um, and I'm just always growing and learning and loving working back with track, worked with some of the Jamaican athletes and that's kind of how I ended up with Noah through the connections with Adidas and you know working really well with those Jamaican athletes and I'm just loving being here back in the world of track and helping these guys perform the best. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for being here and we're going to of course, get into each one of your stories, but I'm going to set the scene here. We are in Lausanne, Switzerland, and uh, I think it's most of you guys' first time being here. J Joe, I think you've been here before. I came through here on a train working with beach volleyball like six weeks ago, so. Oh, so but, quick but turnaround. But quick turnaround, yeah. <laughs> okay. I had a few days at home over with Kong Games and then back here, so. Yeah, but. Where is home, exactly? Uh, Australia. Oh, so. Just north of where the Commonwealth Games were last time. Okay. And then Jareem and Joseph, I think this is your first time, right? Yeah, this is definitely my first time here, and it's beautiful, by the way. The view from the hotel is to die for. When you look across the lake and you see the mountains, just speechless. It's beautiful. Yeah. Going on right now, there's a pole boat. Yeah, that's actually funny. Uh, oh, it started already. <laughs> yeah, it started. Yeah. I've been hearing them chant. Um, I think Mondo might have just started jumping. Oh. Yeah, so we might even see a world record go down today. I mean, every time Mondo jumps, jumps a world record pretty much is on alert. And the good thing is you could look at it from your bedroom window. Yeah, I, I, gotta, I gotta stretch my neck a tad bit, but if I, if I poke my, neck, my head out the window, I definitely can get it. I got you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, Joseph, just getting into the professional life. Yeah. Um, is it exciting? <laughs> is this fun? Is this the dream? Is it is it is it exciting? The whole dream from a freshly ending um, collegiate career is always to like go pro, you know, like yeah. oh, go yep. pro, go pro, go pro, and then you guys don't really realize what it takes to maintain being a pro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, the nights and the days where you're alone in your camp. Cause I was alone in my camp for like two weeks, and it was just from my room to the track, ice tank, eat, sleep, repeat, yep. for two weeks straight between time where um, we don't have meats. You know what I'm saying? So it is exciting. You know when you have the view that you have right now, and when you are competing against, you know, guys like you and Jareem, and um, you know, like who else? Josephus Grant, Arion, right? All of them, right? It is a dream because you do watch them compete and like, damn, I want to be there one day and you're actually here. Mm -hmm. But there is work you still have to do to maintain it. You know, oh, that's 100%. what I don't think people really understand. It's like you have to maintain. And I totally agree with you because I remember 2017 when I was in college. Um, I think I was in summer school before the World Championships and I would look at some of the Diamond Leagues and some of the times they run. And by this time, I was jogging 2004, 2005, and they were winning Diamond Leagues in 2010. I think you got hurt earlier that year. Yeah, I did. Um, and I was watching these times while I was in class on the computer. I wasn't doing any work at the point. <laughs> <laughs> and um, right, in enough. my mind, I was like, this is what these guys do and win a Diamond League. So it looked easy to me. Yes. And my first year pro, um, we ran in, in Doha together. I ran 1999, yeah. and I was a consistent 20 year guy. And... Comparing it to college is one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made because mm -hmm. college track and professional track is two different things. Where in college, you could kind of run yourself into shape and mm -hmm. you have a team support. Yeah, yeah. You, it's not, you're not on your own. A professional atmosphere is a little bit different. Um, I more think about it like you just go out there and you compete. Um, it, 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 it's a big, big difference. So, um, you know, that was, that was just something to open my eyes my first two, three years as a professional, you know, just... Try not to compare it to, to college too much because it's mm -hmm. a whole different system. I think that's a, like a, one of the best ways that you could probably do it. Um, I didn't get the chance to go to college. Well, let's not say didn't get the chance. I decided not to go to you college. Can, you had an offer. <laughs> I happily you signed can. the contract to not go to college. <laughs> but I, I was very 
I tried to be extremely open minded when I joined yeah. the group because I didn't want to bring any type of habits that might be bad into this group. I wanted to be like, hey, I work, train me like I'm a blank slate. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm really ready to forget everything I've ever learned. And I, that that literally goes back to what we were just talking about I mean, yeah. when you know pushing off that front foot. I no, yeah. all through high school I pushed <laughs> off my front foot, and I was like, yeah, I got to get a strong quad to push off of this, you know, front pad to you know get a great start. And you know, I broke the high school national record <laughs> pushing off that front foot. And I get to uh, my first day of pro, and we're gonna in the blocks for the first time. And he said, why is your heel not touching the back pad? I said, what? Mm. He said, put your heel on, the back, on the back pad and push off of it. I said, like, with real force? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like, yes, you need to use that back pad and the front one. Wait, both at the same time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. My mind it's was different. blown different. from that spot on, and uh, the, the things I've learned have not slowed down at all. Yeah. Every day is new. And I sure. think a um, great point, and I think that's the difference between a good athlete and a great athlete, is the athlete that's always willing to learn and yeah, take on oh, yeah. different yes. ideas and be to willing to thing. adapt and not just shut it down straight away and, mm -hmm. you know, try it if it doesn't work, cool, but you're always learning, developing and growing. And, that's the great athletes in this world. And give it time. And that's every 17 work. sports. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just track. Also, another difference between college and pros, there's no rounds. Yeah. Nope. There's, One offs. There's no rounds. And so it's like when when you're coming off of the season and it's like, all right, cool, NCs. We have I have two races before my two hundred, so I'm already prepped. Yep. Here it's a one take Drake. I'm Go. It's yeah. like, one, two, ah. three. I like that. I like, I like you, that. Man. Yes, yes, sir. So it's like you have to like you have to mentally prepare and get your body physically prepared to go around 198, 194, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like off rip. Yep. And it's like, hey yo, like, can I get time to like adjust? <laughs> nah. No. Nah. Throw it in the fire. Go ahead, go. Also I think we do take into consideration um we travel so far. There's yep. time differences into play. Yep. Um, Jet lag. Sometimes some of the food would be I'm new sleeping. to you. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a lot of things that go into play with um, being able to perform. Sometimes you're getting there two days before you run. Maybe depends a day before, three days before. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many factors that go into how well you perform on the professional um, circuit, you know. And it's just good to forget everything that you learned in college and <laughs> kind of go yeah. with the flu because yeah. the moment you say, well, I used to do this in college, this is not college. You just have to, <laughs> it's not. You just you have to keep, it, keep it in your mind that yeah. it's not college and, you know, just go out there and compete. I think once you just think that, okay, regardless of what, I'm going to be a competitor, I'm going to compete, I'm going to run, regardless of what scenario or what atmosphere or if it rains or if it's cold or if I got in there two days before, if I didn't get any sleep. You're just trying to go out there and compete. And mm -hmm. I think that kind of helps a lot. I mean, it really helped me my first few years. So, no, For sure. No, I, yeah, that's, that's very true. Yeah, something that I see a lot in collegiate athletes, and usually when people ask, oh, how do you think such and such is going to do when they turn pro? And I'm like, well, the first thing I, I want to do is watch their first two years because I want to see, are you going to be able to adjust one-offs? Because... You, when you show up to a track meet in a professional rally, you have to be ready on that day. It doesn't matter what type of shape you want. And that's cool. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people get upset with pro athletes when it's like, oh, why didn't you run close to your PB off the first meet? I'm like, this is April. I'm just trying to make sure that I get the stick in this relay <laughs> across the line. Right. Let me live. I'm just trying to get, react to the gun on the right moment, you know, get dust the cobwebs off from the season. But they ex demand so much from you. But mentally, you have to be like, you know what, it doesn't matter what they think. I know what part of the season I'm in, and I know which races are going to be, you know, helping me get to that point. Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting point because I think a lot of people that aren't in the sport don't understand what it takes to actually get your body, mind, and all the things like the food and the sleep and the travel all in a place where you're going to run a PR, 
mm -hmm. or like you know be at your best it just doesn't happen like you need to keep building every day and you have an off season and then you got to build again just because you ran 19.3 last year doesn't mean you're going to run 19.3 this year the like your body needs to be in shape to do that your mind needs to be in the shape and i think people just don't understand that they think you did it once you can do it over and over again i actually was having this conversation with um fellow countryman kyle recently i think as athletes sometimes we're very hard on ourselves because each time we compete we judge ourselves by our best performance which is our yep. pr and if oh, you yeah. don't get close to a pr you don't run a pr each time sometimes it would be not with not a right mental state you judge yourself off of that pr and you're disappointed when you don't run mm -hmm. that fast but i think we fail to remember that when we pr'd or when we ran a personal best everything worked um correctly everything worked um, right, you know, um, you was in good physical shape, mentally you had to be good, physically you had to be good, everything lined up well when you PR. Um, so we can't always judge ourselves of our personal best because n not all the time everything is going to line up and sometimes stuff line up correct, you still don't run a PR. But mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a big thing to take the positives out of each situation and, you know, when you have negatives, just use it as something to work, work on or um, to get better. But then never be hard on yourself in track, even if you're not able to run a PR. So that's something else I'm doing, I guess. I definitely agree with that. And, you know, me and Joe have conversations countless times. <laughs> uh, I've been, Joe's over here writing a book <laughs> over the conversations. <laughs> about this stuff. About, about the conversations. everything we've been talking about. It could just be the conversations of Dr. Joe and Nola. It really <laughs> could, though, <laughs> if you wanted to do, but something... That's so much more. It it's is so, so much, much more, more. But something that I want to bring up was, Jareem, you were talking about everything was right on that day, on that moment. Um, and a lot of people don't understand when, yes, when you're running your best, the day is nice, that you're body condition is good and you're making you know a lot of the steps that you could take to do that but that takes sacrifice yeah it takes a lot of oh, sacrifice yeah. and i feel that a lot of people don't understand how much sacrifice we actually are taking <laughs> and i see joe right. joseph over there <laughs> sighing because i right. now know that he understands right. what it's going to take because when i first entered this i was already sacrificing a lot but from the first day I turned pro to the day I am now, the amount of sacrifices I've taken has been instrumentally more. Yeah. I mean, right. you, had to, you had to actually just yeah. sit down and think about it. How, how well do you want to run? How fast you want to run? How, how, how fast how you want to be? How do you want to have to be? Yeah. Period. You have to do the shit that nobody else wants to do. Yep. You have to cut off people. You have to do this. Yep. You have to go to sleep at this time. If You got to go practice by yourself. We Without your coach being in there, God. In, 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 a, in a country you've never been in, <laughs> we have no life. Once we once we run in track, we don't have a regular life like everybody else. Because the sacrifices we have to make isn't normal sacrifices. Plus, um, everything we do affects um, how how well we perform. So you have to be very mindful of when you go to sleep, what you eat, what you do, what you consume physically, mentally, like. It's so, so much. Who you interact with? Yeah. And it's all stacking. Yeah. It, it like, does. Stack. It starts in the fall. You can, like, have some, some, like, life in the fall, like, going out this day, going to some movies. That's, like, chill. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, it stacks in the fall. Mm -hmm. And then you can't rush the stacking, like, when the season starts because it's just a small stacking. Yeah. It's a distraction. Exactly. And then when you're at Worlds, when you're at Diamond Leagues, it's like, all right, cool. Then the whole shit is, like, should be put together mm -hmm. you know and if it's not then, then you're saying you just what are you doing this for <laughs> am, I, am i wrong always gotta know your why always gotta know your why because in those points where you're training by yourself in a strange country and you've got diarrhea because there's bad food you've got to be so connected to your why like why you're here why you're a track athlete super important and yeah no yeah and of course going on to the sacrifice we talking about what you're what are you going to do to improve yeah, 100%. And like when I work with athletes, I, as a coach, I always say like, okay, what's your goal? And we talk about goals and stuff and where they want to go. But it's like, what are you actually willing to sacrifice to get there? Because if they're not willing to make the sacrifice, there's no point going the line. Yeah. Um, something that you, we, of course, we talked about that really, really stuck out to me was talking about knowing your talent and knowing when to use your talent. I would really love if you could just elaborate a little bit on that. I think there's, 
you know, there's, there's talent and being able to execute your talent. It's like being able to execute a race. So you can have talent, but you still need to have all the things in place for that talent to actually blossom. It's kind of like a flower, right? Mm-hmm. Unless you nurture a talent, it's going to turn into nothing. So um, I, I see athletes that have talent, but they're you know, not mature enough to travel yet. So they're struggling when they get to a Diamond League or they're perhaps you know, so stressed out because I know they've got talent, they can't maturely, you know, deal with the mental side of things. So then the talent doesn't matter because they break down as soon as they get to the gun and they know they haven't run and all those kind of things. So it's one thing to have talent, but a second thing to be able to execute and use it. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, to me, one of the biggest things is um, when I, especially when I was younger, I used to like, when you see a feel, you worry about so many things. And, mm-hmm. I've gotten mature enough in the sport that at this point, I just worry about me, like regardless of who's in the race. At the end of the day, I could control how well I execute. I can't control how well Noah execute or how well Joe execute, but I could, I could control me, you know? So like each and every race I go in and I try to compete, I try to control how well I could execute and, you know, just focus on me. And I think that is, um, that's something big that athletes should look at, you know, just focusing on the things you can control and yeah. forgetting about the things that you have no control over because it's pointless at that point, you know? I definitely agree. Uh, Joseph, you've had one hell of a season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real. Yeah. I mean, um, D- Dream has two. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, little well, champion. You know, hey, we're not talking about me. We're not talking about me. <laughs> world indoors. I, we world kind of sitting with greatness right now. That's a long season. You, you feel me? It is. Uh, well, we, our season's a little different. We start our season in in November. When have you? When did you start yours? What in the flamboyant? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, yeah, March. I'm not like yeah, March. March. Yeah, oh, because you had that injury, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I was just, I was nursing two hamstring strains. Um, two. Yeah. Both sides or same side? No, same side. Okay. It was, I was about to say, how were you walking? <laughs> it was one. It was. It was like one, like very slight. Um, at the Olympics, I didn't know that it was a hamstring strain. I thought it was just like tight. I've had thing. that before. So it's like, like, like two centimeters. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. like it's just tight. Well, so you uh, stretch it out. If you don't look after it. Yeah. So, and, and then in the fall, when I was doing a 220, coach said, like, go again. And I hit a gear that my body wasn't like ready for. And mm. then, like, I, it went up, it popped, and then I, like, hit the ground and I slid like 10 feet and, and I was like yeah I'm yeah your body definitely wasn't ready for that gear yeah. Yeah. yeah I got up after that but it was just it was just really like a, a slight strain and then a PRP shot it was worked after that so I was fine but then outdoors is, is when my season like started yeah. yeah and one I'd like to thank you for sharing that because in the track world you know we have journalists but I feel enough stories aren't told yeah, yeah, and definitely. A story like that is, I know that there's probably a hundred and thousand kids across the world who needed to hear something like that, you know, because we haven't even really got to your accomplishment. I mean, you, you're an Olympian, NCAA champion. Double. Double. My, double champion. Double stop, time. Clear my throat. <laughs> double. Yeah. NCAA. I'm not going to lie. Watching that hundred, yeah. I did not expect you to win that hundred, <laughs> but you know who did? Hmm. My brother. My brother has been rooting yeah, for yeah, years yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. for a, a, a whole God. year since God. last year. He is like this man. He's gonna break the the the, the collegiate record. He, he's gonna Shit. win. He's, he's gonna pull it off. And me and Jareem are like, no, we're not gonna have this I didn't I didn't think it would have win the hundred though. I didn't I didn't mm-hmm. hire down for the hundred. But yeah. I, I one def- of my friends did say, if you could get out anywhere close to them, it's over. And, that, that's yeah. exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I, again, I didn't have you for the 100. I did have you for the 2. Yeah. Not, not, Makes sense. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'll tell anybody who proves me wrong, I get excited. I want to be proven wrong. Yeah. Because that means that you're going out there with the intention to win, with the intention of grit, with the intention of I'm going to make a, you know, the, a, something great happen out of a situation where people don't think it's going to happen. Because I used to have to do that in 100. Mm-hmm. You know, when I walked, your races looked like how mine mm-hmm. all looked like. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I'm a horrible starter. Mm. You know, you're just trying to catch up to everybody in the last few meters, oh, yeah. and you're coming like a train, and then all of a sudden you gotta hope that you you got the lead. Uh, then, 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 oh. Sometimes you gotta hit yeah. the left, right, and the shoulder lead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I definitely feel like every time I watch you, I'm like, dang, I I definitely feel you when you're trying, when you're over here moving. But something I really love when you run is in your last 50 meters, your hips are tucked. Mm. Your knees are coming up and mm. you're striking the ground. Yep. And you mm. can just see the force going into the ground. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. When? Damn. When? Because I was in lane seven, you were in six at a world's. I was like, all right, cool. I know he's going to get out. So don't be surprised. Just go with him at least. Yeah. Got to like 30. I'm like, damn, he's here already? <laughs> <laughs> so, Got to 50, I'm like, he's there already? <laughs> like, he's, like, he's over there. And then on the, on the, um, like, 120, I'm like, all right, cool, go again. I try to go again. I'm like, he is too far gone. I was like, it know, was, what? It was crazy. There's been a lot of people who have told me that, crazy. even before this year. Because this is the first year that I've really got the start down. Mm. Like, even in Monaco, I looked back and they were like, oh, yeah, you recorded a 10-1 start. I said, what? Mm. That was 10-1? Like, anytime you run 10-1, you're already in the top four fastest 100-meter times ever run in the first 100 of a 200. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Because, it, I mean, again, the, the only people has been me, Michael Johnson, Johan Blake, and uh, Usain Bolt. That other guy. <laughs> that other guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, nobody else has run 10-1. And if, if you are running 10-1, be prepared I mean, to drop anything between 10-4 and you know, the world record. <laughs> on the curb is crazy. Yeah. 10 one on the curb? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of people don't understand. I, I literally had somebody ask me a question like, why is this first 100 so slow? I'm oh, so like, All right, bro. <laughs> oh. Relative You don't know. What? Let me, let me ed edge them okay you. I'm saying. <laughs> what? But, uh, yeah, you're not, th there's a whole curve. You're never gonna be able to run the same speed you run on the street. In, on the, on, on the street. Just Unless you have like that. exactly, you have like crazy strength here, crazy like strength everywhere. But like yeah. still, at the same time, you can, yeah, you're not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely feel for you. But yeah, I only just had that start happening. But I'm glad it's here because that took since I've started running track to mm -hmm. get. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking my coach, "How long does it take?" For somebody to, to get a good start, like uh, practicing it over mm -hmm. and over, he said, "Some people never get it." Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. And I thought in my head, I said, "Oh no, that's not gonna be me." <laughs> yeah. I don't care how long this takes, that's not gonna be me. I promise you, because I'm gonna get this, because I got goals, and I have to run fast in that first hundred to get to these goals. And I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I did realize this year that you did focus a lot on. You know, just starting better, pushing better, hitting better positions, and you were very detailed in you know how how you get out of the blocks and how consistent your strike pattern was. Like just even watching your train, I mean, because we train in the same place. Yeah. Um, watching you do some of the turn runs, watching you do some starts on the straight, I was like, yeah, this man getting better. <laughs> uh, I, I saw it in you too. The good thing is, every time I see her, like run faster in practice or uh, work on something technical and get better at it, I was like, well, okay, well, you just raise the raise the bar a little bit higher mm -hmm. so now i had to do the same thing to at least be close to you you know so it was definitely some type of motivation for me too mm, i appreciate that a lot because I, I i was trying a lot I and mean, the conversations that i had i've probably talked to coach the most this year of bouncing ideas off his head like what do you think of this how, how about this how do i get to this position what do you like i'm literally trying to see this from all different angles because i started learning this year after the coaching younger kids, how that coaching is basically just communicating in a whole bunch of in 500 different languages mm -hmm. and 500 different ways until it sticks yeah. with an athlete. And I had to figure out what it was going to take for me to stick. And something else that helped was I was doing a lot of PT. And I remember Joe, when we first met, you came over and we were doing calf raises. And I was like, Joe, do you, get, you, know, you got 
something for this because I don't really have anything to advance. You don't have calves, right? Yeah. I don't have, like, my calves could be way stronger. And you yeah. know who, how I knew that? I was studying Trayvon Bromel at the time, and I asked him what makes you so good at the stars. He's like, bro, I just worked on my quads, my hamstrings, and my calves a lot in high school. <laughs> and I looked at his calves, and I was like, dang, that thing looks bigger than your quads. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I noticed you, I was watching you running and training when I came over and I was like, damn, what's going on with that left foot? And if the left foot is doing what it was doing, it's telling me the calf is probably weak and that's the easiest way to try and improve that. And we got you in the gym and I remember like, do a single calf raise and you're like, yeah. And I'm like, no, all the way up. And you're like, what? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're weak. You don't have end of range. And you look at me like, yeah, but I'm a current world champion. Like, I got this. And I'm like, yeah, no, you don't. Like, we can have this. And so, like, for me, the great thing was, no other is that, like, and I, at that moment, I was like, damn, I can work with this guy. Because you took it on, like, straight away and was like, okay, how can I learn? I was like, you're like, what else? What else? What else can we do? Yeah. And, you know, and then now we're seeing that, like, come off in your starts, right? Mm hmm Those first few steps. Because yeah. that foot's better. Yeah. And it, that's probably the, the, every year I have a goal of what I'm gonna work on. And this year just happened to be the foot. But, you know, sometimes, it, when I first got injured, like in 2017, I, we were talking about that briefly, it was the back. Okay. Um, and I, it actually made me go into Pilates. Yeah. So I don't can. know if anybody else has done Pilates, but that- That's but, tougher than gym. It's tougher than gym, yeah. for sure. It'll teach you how to use your core, I'll yeah. tell you that. <laughs> you, you, Pilates, bro. You end up using muscles you never knew you had. It's, the, it's the small ones. Bro. And yeah. it's like, I've worked with guys, like, oh, you need to do Pilates, and they're like, yeah, whatever, and I'm like, okay, I'll do a session with you, and I'm doing it, and they're like, damn, girl, I'm like, killing. Yeah, yeah, it's way harder than what it looks. Now, what, what would you say that, so if you were explaining, but so Joseph right here looks a little not like he's going to be trying Pilates. It's not for the weak hearted. It's not. Well, how would you explain Pilates or, or what it would benefit no, from? Okay, so essentially God, with Pilates, you start, the whole idea is to start with like a stable base mm. and you put your, your body in a more, un, like more unstable positions and then produce force against that unstable base. So your okay. core is working to hold you the whole time. Yeah. So, be unstable and then produce. Okay, sports. I'm gonna put. That's crazy. Well, that is that's sports in itself. But that's you're putting like yourself in an uncomfortable that's, position that's to true. get more comfortable with it. And you know, if we talk about goats and other sports, <laughs> you know, um, like this, all the best surfers, best tennis players, they're all like Pilates. Oh. Pilates is a thing. And then uh, another example I was gonna give is remember when you were talking about you were getting out the blocks and you weren't ready to be at that level yet. Oh yeah, I want to talk about that. No. no. Yeah. I feel that, that if, you gear, know, that, that gear, gear yeah. Pilates will help your body be stable enough to be like, okay, maybe we didn't have the muscles for it, but we at least are strong enough in the little muscles to not increase the injury mm -hmm. or, you know, not let it go too far out of whack. Mm -hmm. And it, particularly like in sprinting, those first few steps are so important to get your momentum going forward. So if you've got that stable base and your legs can do whatever they need to beneath it and get power to the ground. Otherwise, what happens is you get like forces going in different directions mm -hmm. and it's just dissipated forces and moving you down the track. Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me, doesn't it? So <laughs> what I'm hearing But we is, talk about that all the time. <laughs> yeah, we do. But what, what I'm hearing is the key to running 19.3 is Pilates. It's one of them. <laughs> oh, it's, it's right? one of them. Oh, okay. okay. It's no, one no, of them. no, 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 no. Pilates and, and playing league, right? Uh, losing in league. Losing in league. Losing in league. Different, different, different. No, different. I reckon the key to running 19-3 is having all the boxes tick and having a it great team is. of right. experts it's around you it's to tell you what those things are, like all the pieces of the pie, and if you're missing a piece. I definitely agree. Uh, Jareem, you have PR'd three times? This year, I believe. Uh, twice. Twice. But twice. Three. It's, three it's technically. But you've been in your area code. You've been right next yeah. to your PR three times. Yeah. Keep Every up the record race. in front of my eyes. I watched it. <laughs> in Trinidad, he ran 1982. 83. 83. In the rain. In the rain. In the rain. I remember watching that. In the rain. Right. Yeah. Yeah. In the rain. And I was like, <laughs> let let them know it was raining very hard. <laughs> 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 yeah. No. Yeah. 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 No. Like actually, it was raining. Kind of hard, and, and I was like, all right, cool. Did he ran, he, he, he jogged 20, 20, uh, 15 that day. What was it? Was it Friday? Friday, right, right. right. And then Sunday, right? Yeah, Sunday. He jogged 20, 15 Friday. Shut it down at like 150, jogged, and looked at the clock. I'm like, all right, cool. 
<laughs> like he's ready to run 19 crazy, right? You, like, you told me that on the, the warm up track too. Yes, yeah, 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 yes. I'm like, bro. Anyways, so he's running the um, 200, and I'm like, Dream is about to run 19 crazy right now. Dream in, the dream in, in the heavy rain. In the heavy rain. That y'all said 1982. I'm like, damn. And then 83. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then and then the whole crowd. Boost, boost, boost. Hey, ah, dream, dream, dream. You know what I'm saying? It, it was, it was a sight, man. It was a sight. But I do bring this up because, and since we're talking about, you know, taking off boxes and, and making sacrifices and bringing all the change, what was the thing that you feel that you were kind of changing this year that really got you to that level? Mm. Um, a lot. I kind of forgot a lot of the things that I would have would have limited me in, in practice before because I'm kind of shy to, to sprinting. I don't really like to sprint that much. And That's crazy. Yeah, I don't I, 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 I to sprint. Yeah, I'm what telling you. What do you mean by that? No, yeah, so, for yeah. example, I would prefer doing eight 200s over four 60s in practice. Because this, this is true. Yeah, because this is true. it feels better to my body to do longer work than, than sprint. Sprinting actually kind of hurts me. So he actually... When, when did you start actually sprinting with our group? Late. What, like after Prefontaine or even after that? Nah, like, after Pre. It was our way after Pre too. I didn't start like actual sprinting. Like coach will throw in some days here yeah. and there. But like actually sprinting with you all was late. Like maybe a little bit before Worlds. Like maybe two weeks. Yeah. Two, yeah. yeah. Around that time. And, uh, so that was something that changed. I had a more of an open mind towards um, sprinting. <laughs> I wish y'all could see. Yeah, no, for real, I swear. Joe's he's, face he's right now. Uh, There's a reason he ran the 400 at World Indoors. Yeah. 45 flat indoors. Yeah. Um, and, and he ran the 400 at Prefontaine. Mm -hmm. That's why it was so, you're right. Yes, yes, yes. He, he did. He did. Mm. He yeah, did. so um, I one of the biggest things for me too was um, talking to my, my sports psychologist. I've had a lot of confidence this year. That was very important <laughs> to me um, just to... Believe in yourself mentally to focus on you. I think to me that's one of the biggest things, focusing on you, especially in an individual sport. Like you mm, can't worry yeah. about who you're running against. And I mean, the second time I'm saying this, but I literally just focus on the things that I could control. That was something definitely important to me. One mm. thing I, I didn't say the third time, you know. Yeah, just... fo focus on you because you, you are the main, like think about like a video game. That you are your own character. You can't control anybody else but yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, um, another thing that I learned this year that was very helpful for me, and this is like a life skill, was um, compartmentalization. And I learned mm -hmm. this with my yes. um, sports psychologist. Be basically, in a nutshell, compartmentalization is being able to deal with different things in your life and different scenarios in its time and place. You know, yes. sometimes you might be stressed about something or... Like maybe you're stressed about school, you're stressed about personal life, and you look at it as a whole and try to deal with all these things as one whole. Well, where compartmentalization comes in, you deal with each situation one at a time, in its time, in its place. And that makes it a lot easier. Because before I would have looked at it as a whole and get so stressed out, I, I ended up um, procrastinating, yep. probably yeah. going to sleep, which is a symptom of stress because yep. most people who stress end up going to sleep. And waking back up to your problems again, and now I just deal with my problems um, one straight problem. on. Yeah, one I've, problem. I've got a really time. great analogy for that that I use. So think of like compartmentalization is like a chest of drawers, mm -hmm. and you don't want everyone to see your dirty, messy drawers, right? So you only open up one drawer at a time. Yeah. Mm. And then you shut that one and open the next one. So the moment like you want your girlfriends and all you whatever, just shut that drawer till after practice, and then open it. And that's just. Yeah. way of looking at it. That's definitely important. You know, when you when you head to the track, you should just worry about track. You shouldn't worry about what's going on at home or anything outside of that. You should just focus on keeping your focus on track and getting better. When you're home, then you could deal with whatever happening at home or wherever else it may be, you know. So that was a skill learned for me that you could take in all facets of life, you know. That's yeah. very important. And I think, like, know your distractions as well. Be really aware of what your distractions are likely to be and have strategies in place to deal with them. So you know, if you know that your girlfriend's annoying on <laughs> track me days, let's say, hey, like, we just have a thing that we don't chat on track me days because mm -hmm. it's hard for me to deal with or whatever. So put boundaries in place is a super important one too. Yeah, and I would also add, in this sport, you kind of, wherever you put in is where you get out. 
Um, so I think it's very, it's very, very important you know, to give yourself the best chance possible to be as successful as you can by making sure you build the right foundation, you do everything right, and you know that definitely heightens your chances of success. Yeah. I definitely agree. Guys, uh, I think this is a good place to stop for the normal stuff. As much as I don't want to, but we are about to reach into the hour mark. Uh, I personally like to do Q&As. Would you guys feel comfortable? Yeah. Doing yeah, 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 yeah. All right, everybody. This is the part where I will open up the requests. Um, I don't want to go too long, so I, I guess we'll try to keep it only like 15 minutes of Q&As. Uh, we got to... Great cast of people who are, you know, done, you I that. think, an amazing job, <laughs> you know, just talking about their journey, and I, I think they're open enough to help anybody, so I'm going to actually go off, you know, who's already requested, um, let's open it up, I hope they're still here, to be honest, <laughs> and it's connecting, and it's connecting, No, good, just going to sleep. All right, we That's are now connected. Can you hear me? You are muted. So you can turn the volume off. Oh, yeah. yeah. I usually like when some people uh, are still mm. muted. Maybe, maybe they, they uh, take a sleep, clear my mind, don't and know that um, they are but then, there. You know, just can you hear me? Yep, yeah, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. There you are. Oh, yeah, We're doing great. Yes, yes I, was, I, I was muted. Well, I'm calling in from the Caribbean. That's all I'm trying to do. I love Canada. I yeah. love to see you guys run. Just call in to say hi. Oh, <laughs> well, hi to hi. you too. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Jereen picked that uh that uh accent out real quick. Okay. Yeah. And I, oh! Dream the dream! <laughs> you uh, you're talking to the soon to be no. 200 meter <laughs> record holder for Trinidad and Tobago right here. Okay, how are you, Dream? I'm good, I'm good, all you. I'm okay. <laughs> oh, God. I'm calling from the beautiful island of Port of Spain. You're supposed to know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, have a nice day, you guys. Alright, thank, thank you for well. Thank you for calling. Okay, bye. 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 All right, that was. <laughs> Someone might have a question. <laughs> All right, yes, uh, please, yeah, somebody who, anybody who has a question. Uh, by the way, it doesn't have to be about track. I think we all have obvious outside of track, so if you want to get into that. All right, go on. Like no one losing at League of Legends. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Just saying. Hey, I have to get a losing streak before I can actually do well. Uh, it, it, but it's not even easy though. Yeah. Hey, how you doing there, Tate? <laughs> Favorite food, ooh. Uh, personally, mine is lasagna. Uh, Joe, what do you got? I'll go curry. Curry? What type of curry? Chicken curry. Mm. Chicken curry. With, from which country, though? Oh. That's mm. the real That's question. So I, I do like a Jamaican chicken curry, to be honest. Ooh, mm. good. So I haven't had one from Trinidad, though, so like maybe Dream's going to cook for me next week. I've heard Trinidad curry is... Probably the, the, what everybody claims to be the best. I would Doubles say too. in Trinidad and Tobago, we don't have what is called chicken curry. We have curry chicken. Ah! <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> but um, I would probably go with, I have a few things because it, it, we have such a mix of cultures in Trinidad. That I, I can't just pick one thing, but I would say a curry chicken roti. Um, yeah. I would say corn soup is one of my favorite things to eat, and obviously pilau. You can't be from Trinidad and pilau not be in your top three. I so, don't yeah. even know what that is. <laughs> it's basically stewed, what you all would call brown stew chicken, okay. with um, pigeon peas and rice cooked all together in one pot hmm. together. Sick. I need to try that. <laughs> what you got for us, Joseph? Frosted flakes. Oh, that like, is, seriously? That is my go-to meal if it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, any like. Do you like carry it with place. you? Like, do you I, travel? I, with I, it? See the sacrifice that I make, right? <laughs> I can't cause, because I am lactose intolerant. I can't have frosted flakes all the time, like how I want to. 
So the first time that I had Frosted Flakes was, I know, but like still, I don't like, I'm going to go. Well, get over it because you're alive. So I was I do drink oat milk when I have the chance, you know, but I've only had Frosted Flakes after Nationals and for like two weeks event after that, I shut it down because I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? I thought you just got to keep that physique. Raisin, Raisin Bran is mine. Raisin Bran Crunch is mine. Leave the room. No. <laughs> Raisin you Bran? may leave the room, Raisin sir. Bran? Raisin Bran Crunch, sir. You got to put like crunch. raisins in your cereal when it's supposed to be sweet? Is that like sweet? The raisins are sweet. <laughs> No. You said, what is the, the severity in your ear? I take my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, that's a man of culture. I was about to say, there's a man of culture right here. You're invited to a cookout. They've been, they've been bullshitting me. Hold on, no. I don't die with that cereal. All right, Zay, thank you for your question. No. <laughs> Chipotle has been, has been giving me the, 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 I don't round. I don't know. You what? eat a Chipotle? Every every single day. That's, That's disgusting. Why I it's not. <laughs> it's not. It is. Wait, it's no longer not. friends leave the room. If you're going there every single day, that's disgusting. I'm trying to get this damn sponsorship though. That's what I'm saying. That's you know what you food. should do? That's I'm food. I'm not gonna lie to you. Invest in a personal chef. Personal chef? Straight I'm up. sorry, I don't have that I don't have that type of bread like Hey bro, wherever you thing. putting your funds at, take it out of that. And put it into this, because this right here is the investment into your body. This right yeah, here awesome. can take you from feeling like That's crap every said. day to yeah. feeling amazing every day. Especially if they're working with your nutritionist, then you know you're getting the right food and it tastes good. And a personal chef doesn't cost as much as you might yeah, think. You can sure. find people. You like, buying Chipotle every day is probably more expensive than yep. a, a personal chef. Yep. And Jareen did say to me the other day that this year is the first time he's invested a lot in his body. This is the most I've ever spent season, season on, my, ever. on my body. So most amount of money was this year. What do you guys spend on your body? A lot, bro. Bro, I see. Like, okay. recovery? Recovery, like, everything. Like cryo or like, like, like what? Let me, t let me just share with you what I had at Worlds. Mm -hmm. I brought my Cairo. Mm -hmm. I had my massage therapist. And mm -hmm. both of them are not cheap. But then on top of that, there was already Jerrica who worked for USATF. Mm -hmm. I got in the boots every day. Mm -hmm. I had the little, the, the back brace heat massage thing that they had going on. I was the using Venom that game. every day. Venom. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was in the hot tub every morning. Like mm -hmm. I bought a hot tub at my house just for that reason to keep my legs fresh. I'll tell you what, a hot tub is a great investment. If you get in that thing right before your hardest day and then right after your hardest day, you're ready to go tomorrow. Best next. thing after Taking take take notes from Noah. It's for real. I, yeah. Before your hardest day? Before and after. So you tell me in the morning. Before no, 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 no. It's the night. The night. Oh, before. The night before. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, and after. after. Yeah, and after. And then, I'm, I mean, I'm the one who's paying for Joe to be here. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure that I am at my best every time I run because the last thing I want is my body to break down and I have to shut down the season and I lose out on money and that's the moments that I could have been either working to better myself or been, you know, running. For the people who don't have access to these type of uh, uh, luxuries, what do you uh, recommend? I mean, of course, there's your, your simple getting into recovery boots, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's Normatex or Game Ready, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you can find it. Epsom salt baths are still king. You know, hot tubs, hot tubs is just the advanced version of Epsom salt baths. You so know. whatever you do, don't use ice consistently. So like if you have an ice bath every night, it's not gonna have the same effect. Preach, preach. <laughs> so you should only use an ice bath like when you really need to for like a really heavy session. So, so you had like run four races in a day, then an ice bath is gonna be effective. But if you do it after every training session, it ain't gonna do anything. I know that, uh, so like being in high school, I, I went to Palmer Chiropractic, and there's a lot of chiropractics where if you prove that you're on a team, you can go in for free too. So you can oh, get shoot. checkups and get massaged and whatnot, totally oh, free. Sick. I went every week for like nine weeks. Where is this? Uh, this is Palmer <laughs> Chiropractic, but they have, they're a chain throughout Florida, I know. Ooh, really? So, Palmer Chiropractic. But, I mean, but there's yeah. like a different yeah. thing good and bad people too, right? True. So like, true. Oh, yeah. it's very true. But if you're doing a sport, yeah. check your chiropractic yeah. centers around you. Yeah, get out. Oh, get a stim machine. Free. I got a Mark Pro right over there in the corner. I need to get me one. Get a stim machine. Those, it would. I've had that since I first went pro. It was the, the the first thing that anybody suggested to me to help with recovery. Stim. It. I definitely advise that, especially for flushing. Jumping. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Shit. But you don't have to hire it on a have it on a high yeah. level. Yeah. You can have a very low setting and it'll just it'll do the job the same. All right, let's let's get at least like one or two more questions in here. We we my bad, my bad. Nah, nah, nah. Bad. I mean okay. this is great yeah. content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was good. This, was, this good. was very good content. You know, we we were getting some good stuff in here. All right, moving on to our next person. We got Howard, Howard Bailey. Just a quick comment, a couple quick comments for the, the gentleman who says he doesn't like to sprint, especially not longer than 200 meters. It's really important to do to, to different pacing, tempos, intensity when you train, so you're st stressing and developing all three energy systems. And uh, what you're saying about the importance of nutrition and, and using in hydrotherapy for recovery, that's untouchable. That was me. Yeah. That was me. I think it's for it was, everybody. Yeah. Uh, anybody who wants to answer. He just said something about your training. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, no, no, but the first part was about me, I believe. Oh, okay. No, yeah, said, yeah. He was saying that you, you, you need to do no, ABC, I, the, right? The, the thing is, I wouldn't say that I don't sprint. It's just I, um, I was saying that in the past I didn't like to, so now I've been more open to sprinting a little bit more because it's needed. Um, it's common sense. You, you, you can't get fast with all training fast. Simple. You were smiling all week at the tractor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just said. <laughs> Are you just coach though? Those long miles early in the season. Yeah, yeah, true. I'm not gonna start something. Oh, oh I'm not start I think you were just asking. Oh. Um, and you had a question on nutrition as well. What was that? Uh, can you repeat it? Oh, I, I was just saying what, the comments that you made about uh, about the benefits of having a personal chef, uh, basically, basically taking care of the quality, of the nutrition, the food that you're putting into your body, and also the the impact of of uh, having having an ice the ice bath or or have going having your uh, a hot tub so you so you can basically take take care of your muscles and facilitate recovery that's huge. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, you just uh, agree. So yeah. You, so yeah, yeah. They, they may look they may look like they cost, but trying to recover from mm -hmm. a hamstring or or a tweet tweet soleus or something. That is being, true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I do agree. I think Joe. You can attest to how how much would you say it's easier to take care of a body that's already good or? Oh yeah, hundred percent. <laughs> like, I call myself a performance physical therapist because I try and look at things the other way around. So from a proactive rather than a reactive approach. So how can we keep the body good rather than fix it when it's broken? Yeah. And I think that's where all physical therapy should be going and changing the mindset around what we do. And there's kind of certain sports that are starting to do it that way, but not globally. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Howard. That you made very good comments. Uh, thank you for listening in to us. Just to quickly add for what you were saying, though, I think sometimes um, maybe all athletes might be, be maybe be able to attest to this. When everything is working well, sometimes they get a little bit slack on. Oh yeah. yeah. But, but everyone's like that in yeah, whatever they yeah, do, right? Yeah. But like, everything when a girl's skinny, well, you she don't pay that much <laughs> attention to you know Same. fixing it. Mm -hmm. So. I agree it's, with that. it's kind of a mental battle too to remember that okay my hamstring not tight and it fire in the way I need it to fire well okay now let me continue doing and not just forget about it because it, I don't feel anything now I think sometimes as at least we just it's feeling good so let me don't give it that much attention anymore that's yeah, what happens I, def I definitely agree with that I do it sometimes oh I sometimes. do I'm guilty of it myself I was two two days ago I mean I, Joe was a little like oh you need to get your knee in I was like I used to have a drill for that yes <laughs> and you haven't been doing it and I haven't been doing it I just happened to stop doing it after right after Worlds it's crazy ah. like, <laughs> no all right let's get like one last question in because we're about to reach the hour point um let's see who we got here I'm just saying because I don't like when, when people make comments about like oh you need to start training like this I'm like mm, okay you're not right. a coach though but I will hear you out Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I am so sorry, but I do not want to butcher it. <laughs> but uh, wait. yeah, I don't want to. Are you there? Pronounced Fonzo. Fonzo. Okay. Uh, well, nice Hello. to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. Nice meeting. Well, nice meeting to all of you guys. Yeah. But I just had a quick question. Um, I want to see what goals you guys have for next year, because I know all of you have been setting personal best this year so what goals do you guys have for yourself next year sure who wants to do oh i'm 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 being beckoned to me first <laughs> uh well first i thought i'd obliterate all my past records with new records and so 
World record definitely is on, on watch for sure if it doesn't happen tomorrow. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo. Uh, I think that was okay, just a, like a mic drop. <laughs> Uh, I definitely want to be double, triple world champion next year. I want to win in the 100, 200, and 4 by one And I definitely, after seeing what I've run in the 200, I need to be running 9-7 somewhere in there. So a 9-7 race needs to be put together. And I'd like it to be consistent. But to be honest, if, if I'm breaking the world record in the 200, I expect to be breaking the world record in the 100 as well. Because they got to work together somewhere in there. Uh, finally, I would really like to win, break that world record in the 4 by one to be honest. I think we have the team. Um, it definitely showed this year with, you know, having three separate guys triple um, um, sweep the 100 and the 200. So we definitely have the depth. It's just putting the right races together, getting comfortable with each other. And, you know, you know that's going to come with practice. And hopefully everybody shows up to World Relay so we can <laughs> get that practice. Uh, and then, shoot, I mean, if we're already breaking records, we might just go into that sweet horizon and go into the unknown territory. See what 18 seconds look like. 941, Joe, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Um, for me, I guess I would say just to be better than I was this year, um, around 1980 this year, so I want to go faster than that next year. And Team for the 400, around 4479 this year, so I mean, I just want to go faster and be, be a better athlete next year, please God. and. Just continue to improve on my times and win world medals. Um, yeah, that's about it for me. Joseph, Joseph, <laughs> Joseph. My 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 goals are to make the uh, make the that. final in the hundred for worlds and uh, medal and in the two hundred at worlds. Might as well just um, medal in the hundred too. Might as well. Yeah, you can't, you know, I mean, you're not just gonna walk you know up into the mean. finals and not try to medal. No, uh, no, no one ra uh, races to get like second place. I feel like we could have a podium place. sitting here. You'd right be surprised. Just saying. No, on the mindset yeah. of others. Nah, not that. <laughs> me. You're hearing that, Jeff, me, right? Podium? Personally, I'm not yeah. racing to like get second place. That's All right, good, 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 good. <laughs> but like, but but you're, yeah, you're just racing to your best. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Whatever just that is. Take more sacrifices and and trust coach more. That's. As to goals that I have next uh, season. The right sacrifices. The right sacrifices. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> don't need to be taking bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. we, we don't need you to jump out of plane for no reason. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he told me to. <laughs> Not for real. But yeah, that's that's just uh, goals. Chipotle sponsorship. Chipotle sponsorship <laughs> for real. You eating it every day. <laughs> playing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Joe, yes. what, what are you? Uh, what are your uh, second? Okay, uh, well, goals? I guess mine's kind of different to these guys because I'm just like in the background making it all happen, but. I tell myself I work for the best to be their best when it counts. So if I'm doing that wherever I'm in the world, yeah. whoever wants me around, and hopefully it's these guys in this room, and um, I'll see you all at Worlds. Shoot, you definitely will. I, I can't wait for that. No, for real. All right. All right. Thank you. For oh, on the podium, I'll see you all. <laughs> yes, all on the board. One, two, three. I don't care which way. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm I do. Just, <laughs> just to let y'all know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you for calling in and thank you for listening. Thank you. All right, have a good day. That is funny. All right, guys, with that, I think we're going to end it. Uh, any closing remarks, anyway? This is, the, again, this is the time for you to share anything you want. If you want to plug in your sponsor, <coughs> Adidas. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <Thanks> for the. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, um, I have, I have, I have one thing. Um, okay. Go ahead, take the mic there. If you are listening at Chipotle, <laughs> I have a really good resume for how young I am, and I know that nutrition is like a big thing that you guys praise a lot. My email is in my Instagram bio, mm. and you guys added me on Twitter, so it's not like you guys can't get into contact. So let's make it happen. Honestly, thank you. Yeah, who's that? Who's the agent that they need to go to to get that getting worked on? Actually, thank you. My agency's tag and Instagram is also in my bio. But tell them just in case they don't hear. Newton Agencies, Newton Agencies. Mm. Thank, you. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Sponsor your boy Chipotle, please. <laughs> Dream Joe, any any Thanks plugs that we need to get in here? Nah, I good. 
<laughs> All right, so you're good, Joe. You I'm good, good, I'm good. All right, everybody, thank you for listening. Um, again, we're going to be racing here in Lausanne Diamond League tomorrow. I believe that's probably going to be sometime around 2 p.m. Eastern U.S. time, but that's going to be around 7 o'clock um, Swiss time. Guys, well, no, that's not time we won, but that's not one time the, the meet starts. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, All right. Oh. But yes, yeah. everybody, enjoy your day. Thank you for listening, and make sure you're praying to God because your coach will not be listening. Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Woodley. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real.